there's a chance that when we push that button, we destroy the world. Chances are near zero. Near zero. Until now, the most prominent image of J. Robert Oppenheimer came from a 1965 interview with NBC in which he recalls his thoughts in the immediate aftermath of the first ever detonation of a nuclear device. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. I suppose we all thought that one way or another. Between the physicist's haunted expression and the fact that it consumes nearly the entire frame, the clip is the initial particle collision leading to the nuclear chain reaction of Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, a three-hour biopic that plays like a jolting thriller. Oppenheimer only slows down to ruminate on questions of all-consuming guilt, as it imagines a vivid psychology lurking within a mind plagued by doomsday visions that serve as both warning and indictment for humankind. It's paralyzing, pulse-pounding, and breathtaking. The opening scenes set expectations for the kind of movie that follows, establishing a three-pronged framing device and flashing back to introduce Cillian Murphy as the future father of the atomic bomb. The first time we see Robert, he stares at droplets of rain rippling in puddles, a calming image that reminds him of hellfire bursting forth from subatomic particles. Even the serenity of nature can't soothe his troubled mind. These intrusive thoughts recur throughout the film, especially in moments when he's forced to confront the awesome might of his creation. The way Terrence Malick contrasts his coming-of-age story in The Tree of Life with images of celestial bodies, Nolan's tale of hubris, regret, and power unleashed is frequently interrupted by images conceived on a subatomic scale refracted and blown up to the size of an enormous 70 millimeter IMAX screen, as if to put it into terrifying context how something so small can cause so much destruction. It's Nolan's tree of death. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves and the world is not prepared. Two governmental hearings draw us into Robert's past. One, presented in washed out color, challenges Robert's loyalty to the United States. The other, shown in black and white, puts former Atomic Energy Commission Chair Louis Strauss, a former ally and eventual adversary of Robert's, played by Robert Downey Jr., in the hot seat. The latter often harkens back to the former, which itself traces Robert's scientific career through the 1920s and 30s until his eventual recruitment to the Manhattan Project in 1942. It would be easy to compare this structure to that of the social network, another depiction of consequential real-world events that weaves a single story from a pair of depositions. But the dueling hearings in Oppenheimer create clashing perspectives that occasionally result in overlapping and repeated scenes, each from the points of view of Robert and Strauss, respectively, with one revealed in color and the other in monochrome. The duo's relationship isn't the story's central driving force. That would be the race to build and test the atomic bomb, which takes up a significant chunk of the runtime, but it serves a vital thematic purpose. Oppenheimer delves into both men's egos in a manner that eventually builds to a stunning dramatic conclusion that fully unearths the persistent undercurrent of regret stirred by Nolan and an explosive performance from Downey. Until that conclusion, the story unfolds as if in freefall, bolting purposely between numerous scenes in which vital scientific breakthroughs occur, bringing Robert and his merry band of hand-picked scientists one step closer to the power of the gods. You can convince anyone of anything, even yourself. As the enigmatic Robert, Murphy brings a requisite sense of poise and command that contrasts his gaunt stature but he wears a perpetually distraught expression that can be deciphered even behind his put-on smiles. He doesn't look like he's seen a ghost, so much as he looks like he's been seeing them all his life, forcing one to wonder whether his ability to envision the building blocks of existence propelled him to greatness or cursed him for all eternity. This is a matter of life and death. I can perform this miracle. Given the story's structure, Oppenheimer unfolds like a memory tinged with regret. 
But was it fated? Murphy's face seems to constantly ask this question too. The highlights of the star-studded supporting ensemble are, for once, the women in Nolan's cast, a pair of female characters whose involvement with America's Communist Party draws the ire of Uncle Sam. Florence Pugh plays Jean Tatlock, a volatile romantic presence in Robert's life and the center of a surprisingly imaginative and unsettling sex scene, while Emily Blunt plays Kitty, Robert's long-suffering spouse. She's significantly more well-rounded than the standard issue supporting wives of Hollywood biopics, who do little else than sing the praises of their partner's genius. Instead, Kitty is perhaps the only person who knows the true Robert inside out, the man behind the martyr, skillfully disguised behind his faux humility and a grating, lonely genius persona. J. Robert Oppenheimer is a paradox only she can solve, and it weighs on her constantly. It's happening, isn't it? Nolan performs numerous creative feats alongside his tenant collaborators, from cinematographer Hoyta Van Hoytema to composer Ludwig Gorensen to editor Jennifer Lame. The gigantic IMAX frame, nearly as tall as it is wide, is used to tremendous effect, not only to capture spectacle, but to push in dramatically to close-ups. Gorenson crafts propulsive and unnerving music out of atmospheric sounds, and Lame draws us in and out of Robert's waking nightmares through intimate sensations of sound and touch. At its core, the movie always circles back to the question of J. Robert Oppenheimer's place in history, as seen by others and by himself. Our work here will ensure a peace mankind has never seen. The conclusions it comes to are far from easy, depending more on the movie's frequent, awe-inspiring abstractions than its words. It's an earth-shaking cinematic vision unlike anything else in Nolan's filmography, the kind of film whose aesthetic impact might just leave you shuffling out of the theater in silent reflection, a sensation few modern Hollywood directors are capable of instilling. Oppenheimer is Christopher Nolan's most abstract yet most exacting work, with themes of guilt writ large through apocalyptic IMAX nightmares that grow both more enormous and more intimate as time ticks on. A disturbing, mesmerizing vision of what humanity is capable of bringing upon itself, both through its innovation and through its capacity to justify any atrocity. For more reviews, check out what we thought of Barbie, Insidious The Red Door, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, and The Flash. And as always, make sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.